Welcome back to Expresso here on SABC3, definitely your feel-good breakfast show. Now this morning we're so honored to have Milani Fervurt in studio as we talk about her new book, The Fervurt Who Toy Toyed. Now she shares the gripping story of her political awakening and of course her international career as well. When she openly supported the ANC, the Fervurts disowned her and her family even once she served in parliament under Nelson Mandela. This is the inspirational love story as well of a modern woman who made her own choices and lived by her own truth. It also goes to the heart of media, politics and power in the modern world and it's a big honor for us to have Milani Fervurt here. Good morning Milani, morning, how are Leanne. you? Thank you for having me. And Bob. <laughs> I know, oh, he just loves, he loves uh, just nice you know, being having... taken care of yeah. on that side. Welcome to Expresso, Thank you. welcome Thanks. to our little couch here Thank you very well. much, early morning, I wow. I know, guys. I know and you look absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, so do so you. So before we get into your book, you currently are, you, you live in Dublin and you're visiting us. How long are you going to be here and how how does it feel being back in Cape Town and on South African shores? Oh, it's always lovely. I mean, yeah. yes, I live in Dublin with my two kids still um, for the moment. And yeah. um, but, you know, I'm here every time I can get a chance. Give me yeah. an excuse and I'm here, <laughs> you know. And yeah. Um, yeah, I flew in two weeks ago, tried to, pilot, tried to get the pilot to land in Waterkloof, you know. Didn't I hope that's the new thing to do. <laughs> He wouldn't, don't yeah, know why, you yeah. know, but yeah, um, so it's lovely to be and I've been here now almost two weeks. So Wonderful good, yeah. stuff. So I asked you during the break, how long has your book been out for? And you said mm. it's just been out for a week. So yeah, there's a lot a of people that are seeing it for the first time. Very interesting title, a title that I think people are going to be like, woo, I've I got to read what this is about. I hope so. But for people who are yet to discover what the contents are about in this book, mm. can you give us a little sneak peek? on what we can expect. Well, you know, it's my life story. Um, I'm, well, the first half of my life story, yeah. I think, you know, I'm now 45, so I wrote the book, um, partly in, in response to a promise I had made to my partner, who I really, really loved, yeah. and um, I'm divorced now, and I, so I don't carry the foot name, that's Jerry and me. That's Jerry, yeah. um, and I had met Jerry in Ireland, and Jerry and I was incredibly, incredibly in love and really close to one another, and in April of 2010, Jerry mm -hmm. asked me, to make him a promise that if he ever dies, he was a little bit older than me, that I will talk about him after his death. And it was an easy promise to make. Yeah. You know, I thought we'd be 20, 30 years together. Mm -hmm. But then two weeks later, he died. Yeah. Um, so the book is very much, I wouldn't have written the book now. I think, you know, it's a bit young, 45, yeah. to yeah, write an absolutely. autobiography. Yeah. But it was sort of in response to Jerry's, um, to wow. my promise to Jerry. So it's pretty much my, um, it's my story. Mm -hmm. It's my story of growing up as an Afrikaner girl. Yeah. I'm very much tradition under apartheid, then meeting Wilhelm, yeah. um, that's me doing my ballet, um, <laughs> meeting Wilhelm, who is the grandson of H.F. Favort. We got married when I was only 20, had yeah. the two little kids, Vilmi and Vian. Yeah. Um, and then we met Nelson Mandela in 1990, and that changed my life. And shortly afterwards, I joined the ANC. Yeah got elected onto the local ANC executive and eventually was asked by my Diba to stand for parliament. Yeah. So I became a member of parliament in 1994. So there was a favort in parliament for the <laughs> ANC. Yeah. So that's part, that's where of course the title comes from. Um, and then it also goes through my life as I went to Ireland, became ambassador, and then also became head of UNICEF in Ireland. And then the last little bit of the book is a much more personal yeah. part of my story, which is the bit with Jerry. No, it's like su such a full life and just reading it and then you get to this point and you're like, she's only 35 and well, she's... 45. Well, 45. Thank you, thank and she's, you Well, you look 25, but <laughs> she, you. she's lived such a full life. life. But Milani, you talk about in the book how you were actually warned against writing it mm. and that it would have negative consequences. Mm. And um, you got many warnings throughout your life on yeah. not joining the ANC and not being a mm. part of this and not being a part of that. Why did you decide to press through? I know you say that it was in response to a promise yeah. that you made to Jerry, but on a personal level as well. It was the promise, yeah. but you know, I think once one starts being quiet because people threaten you, yeah. then you'll never do anything that's right yeah. in life. When I joined the ANC in 1990, I got exactly the same warnings. Yeah. You know, don't do that. You will never get a job again. You, your life will be in danger. You're putting your children's yeah. lives yeah. in danger. You're going to hurt other people. But you know, ultimately, if it's your truth yeah. and if it's the right thing to do, yeah. that's what you should be doing. Absolutely. And I think if people don't, if people stop talking the truth and stop speaking out because they are scared what people yeah. are going to do to them, then 
then I think none of us will ever do the right thing. And it did cause an incredible fuss, the book in Ireland. Yeah. People tried to stop the book legally, and then people tried to tell people not to read the book. Yeah. And they said I didn't have the right to tell my story, which is a strange thing coming from apartheid South Africa no. background where we were told who can speak and not speak. Yeah. So I was really shocked by that. You know, Criticism is fine, but yeah. not that you cannot write the book. Yeah. So I mean, people should read the book here and decide for themselves. Absolutely. Here it's had a very, very positive yeah. response so far. So I'm very happy with that. I, I absolutely loved reading it. And oh, thank um, you. For, for anybody who has yet to read it, your family encouraged free thinking. Yes. A lot of times our family determines the choices that we make. They, they say do. you will do this or you will do that. What was their response to you know how how you moved forward in joining the ANC, um, you know, becoming the youngest MP in 1994? Mm. What was their response to all of this? My parents were absolutely fine. They're not ANC supporters and they never will be. So obviously they were a bit, you know, they were a bit shocked, I think, yeah. worried and so on. My grandparents were very shocked and very yeah. upset because they live in this very conservative yeah. town. But my family was fine with that, you know, yeah. it was it was okay. You know? Well, let's talk about the contents for a moment because as serious, there are serious moments, but there are some quite hilarious moments in the book as well. Um, one particularly where your children are concerned and when you talk about how there were these two white little kids playing in Kayamundi mm. And how, whenever mm -hmm. you were looking for them, you know, uh, the people would just call out, you know, where yeah. then, when, and soon yeah. you'd be able to locate. Tell us the story about uh, you guys were living a double life. Your family, yes. Norval Hallam's family, knew that you were yeah. part of the ANC. Well, my family did know. Val Hallam's family yes. didn't know. Yeah. And um, you were in the kitchen one day, yes. and there was a. T <laughs> tell us about that well, story. Well, you know, my little girl, Vilmi, who was about. Three, two at that stage was, went with me to all the marches and yes. she could toy toy really well you know yes. but whenever she saw a march she would send up or anything to do with the ANC she would push up a little fist and go Amanda <laughs> you know kind of thing yeah and so I knew every time she watched the news there was a lot of Viva Mandela and Amanda and so on yeah. and one day I was in the kitchen cooking for her at my in-laws place them of course not knowing that we were members of the ANC yeah. and then the next moment the news came on and I saw at a distance this little child going you know ready for a big kind of <laughs> Amanda but then you know, I ran and grabbed yeah. her and went, look, 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 outside, you know. So there were a few anxious moments oh, like man. that, you know. And yes, you know, the kids grew up in the township, which now might not sound so strange, yeah. you know. But I would drop them with friends and so on. And actually, they were incredibly safe there, you know. Even the yeah. journalists were, were surprised yeah. at the time. But then, you know, when I went to pick them up, I would just drive into Kaimandi and go, does anybody know where my kids are, you know. And the shouts would go all over the township, where's the Mlungo's kids? Yeah. And um, within minutes, I'd know, far more effective than cell yeah. phones. Yeah. Wow, that was awesome. Before we get to the competition that we have of this really, really awesome book of yours, Good, Milani. There's something that I read in it that says um, you had a conversation with Nelson Mandela when you met him in 1990. She was only 23 years old. And Nelson said to her, you need to remember that you have a voice. People will listen to you. You have to think carefully what you do with that power. And I thought that that was such an amazing thing for Thank a you. man of this stature yeah. to amazing say to man. you. And what you went on to do was absolutely incredible. Um, you were so pivotal in the transformation mm -hmm. of this country. And you, you're, you're a very you. petite <laughs> woman, you know, and that is so inspirational. And I want to thank you for this really amazing book. And um, for all the born frees out there, for us that don't really connect with what happened so many years ago, I think this is really going to help a lot of us. So thank, thank you. you so much for being and with us. thank you for having me on. Thank you so much. Well, we are giving away three copies of Milani Ferwurt's book this morning, The Ferwurt Who Toy Toyed. All you have to do to stand a chance to walk away with one of these is SMS the word WIN, your name and city to 33728. We'll see you right back after the break.